I've already got my morph OBJs over here in the mesh folder. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring those in. There's nothing fancy about them. I got a head and I got a body morph. And it's these two right here. And you can see I named them here full body morph, Bob and full head morph bob name the obj is the same as i with the morph name to keep things tidier um inside there's a, a an id which is actually the obj name um and you can't really change that if you do things break horribly um so once it's read in it's kind of set and so just to keep things nice and clean i like to have the actual morph name there plus it means that it comes up there i don't have to change any of these settings because the defaults are right for everything and that puts them here in the morph floater group which is of course wrong but i'm going to change that later it's just nice to have everything in the morph loader group. That way all your morphs that you're working on are in the same spot at the same time. It makes them easy to get a hold of them or get to and work on. So here I've applied the body morph. And just, just to keep things clean, I'm going to go ahead and set those limits because I'm going to be dialing back and forth. So I'm going to go into edit mode and then click them both and set min-max limits, set the minimum limit to zero. That way when I dial back it stops at zero. So there's the body morph, and whenever you do a morph for Genesis, any figure Genesis, um, really any figure, you can see there that the, the hand, if you watch the hand there, you can see the hand moving in and out, everything moves in and out, but the hand in particular is easiest to see. The hand moves in and out. The bones, however, for the hand don't move in and out. None of the bones move in and out. Um, and that causes a problem when you go to pose it. If we were to pose it now, we get all sorts of weird stuff, like, here, let me zoom in on the hand. So I bent the fingers, and you can see there the fingers all distort, and that's because the bones are still in the same spot as they were, but the mesh itself has moved. So whenever you do a morph that moves mesh around the bones, you need to adjust the, the rigging to the shape. To do that, we're going to go back to our morph, morph dialed in, get back to the figure, and the joint editor tool selected. We're going to go ahead and edit and adjust rigging to shape. On this side here are the bones that are going to get adjusted. On this side here are the face groups that are going to influence how those bones get adjusted. And in this case, we're only doing the body morph. So we're only doing the body morph. So I'm going to scroll down to the head and I'm going to uncheck selected and its children. I don't want those bones adjusted. And I don't want the head morph or the head face group, the eye face group, the lower jaw. The other eye, basically the face groups that are in the head, the tongue and the upper jaw, I don't want those involved. And the defaults are fine for everything else. And there, the bones jumped. If you didn't see it, I'll undo it and redo it. There's undo, there's redo, there's undo, there's redo. So you can see the bones jumping. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ERC freeze all that bone adjustment to my full body morph dial. And I always check the top, check the bottom, just to make sure that there's bones at each end and that I haven't had other dials got bumped and, and aren't at their default values so I only wind up, so I only freeze the bones to the morph. There we go. And now you can see that when I dial the morph, the bones move with it. We can go back in, we can double check the hand. Although I think I turned my morph off. Yeah. So we can double check the hand here real quick. And you can see the fingers move much, much nicer now. It's also a good idea, um, after you've adjusted the rigging, get that back, alt, click, it's back at zero. It's also a good idea, after you've adjusted the rigging, um, to go through every bone, basically, skip the hip, but every bone, and bend it, go side to side, look at them and evaluate whether or not you're going to want to do a JCM for the various joints. I'm not going to go through all that. I'll show you how to do an EJCM in a minute on the head, and that'll cover the same idea. But you want to go through all the joints and check how well they bend and decide if you need to do a do a corrective for them. And if you do, you can go ahead and do the correctives now. I'm going to jump ahead though and go to the head. And again, we got the same problem with the head. If you come over here to the morph and go ahead and turn the body off, we're done with that for now. And you apply the head morph. You can see I did a lot of a lot of movement there. And again, Genesis 3 figures have all these facial rigging bones in there. If you go under head and upper face rig and lower jaw, lower face rig. So you got all these facial rigging bones. If you don't see them, um, you're going to want to go into your scene pane and show and then show hidden notes. It's off by default. Um, 
so that users aren't having to scroll through all this and fight with all that. But if you show them, you can see them. And since you're making content, you should see what's going on. But you can see they don't move. Um, because they don't move, things like expressions and the pose controls on the head just aren't going to work right because the joints for various parts are still back in their defaults instead of where the mesh is moved to. Um, for example, here if I take the eyes and I go up and down, you can see if I get the bones out of the way, you can see the eyes popping out of the socket there. And if I go side to side, they'll do the same thing. So it's finally important that after you do a head morph, you adjust the rig into the shape as well. So we go, we got the head morph dialed in and the joint editor tool selected and we go edit and adjust we're going to shape. Now on the head, I often run into problems um, because this studio is doing a lot of math there and it's trying to just figure out how far a bone should move relative to the mesh that's near it. Um, and I always just run into problems with a couple of, of bones in particular. So I'm going to show you how I usually do it. If you can get away with doing them all at once, you can do them all at once. I usually do them in a couple of passes just to make sure that, that it's fine-tuned a little bit more. So here I'm going to uncheck all. Uncheck all because I'm only doing the head. I'm going to scroll down to the head. And then I'm going to check children and I'm going to check, check selected and children. I'm going to scroll down to the bones that always give me an issue. And that would be the eyelids. Eyelid, eyelid, eyelids. The inner squints for some reason. Left eye and the right eye. And then I'm going to uncheck all the groups. I only want the head, the lower jaw, the tongue, and the upper jaw to influence where those bones move to. And you can see there they jumped. I'm going to go ahead and do another pass to get the to get the squint bones. There's the inner squint and there's the other inner squint. And on those I'm going to do just the head mesh. And they moved. And now I'm going to go back and do the eyes and the eyelids. And again, if doing them all at once works for you, you can do them all at once. I just run into issues with it enough that I just assume go ahead and do them separately from the get-go. And then uncheck and get the two eyes. There's the left eye. Where's the right eye? Right eye, right eye, right eye, right eye. And now that all those bones have been adjusted, I'm going to go ahead and do the ERC freeze and check, make sure it's just the bones getting adjusted and I don't have something weird going on. And now you can see that the bones move with the head morph. And if we're lucky, the eyes will go side to side without flying out of the head and get the bones out of the way. So that worked good, and that works good. All right, so we fixed that. 